A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is coming to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, I charge you to preach the word, to stay with this task, whether convenient or inconvenient, correcting, reproving, appealing, consistently teaching and never losing patience. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but but following their own desires, will surround themselves with teachers who tickle their ears. They will stop listening to the truth and will wander off to fables. As for you, be steady and self-possessed. Put up with hardship. Perform your work as an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. Verbum Domini. Dominus vobiscum. Et bon spiritus tuus. Lexio Sancti Evangelii secundum Matthäum. Glory to Christ, Amine. Jesus.
Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but what if salt goes flat? How can you restore its flavor? Then it is good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Men do not light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. They set it on a stand where it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men so that they may see your goodness in your acts and give praise to your heavenly Father. Verbum Domini Before I begin, I'd just like to point out um, that uh, today is uh, the patronal feast of, Saint, of uh, oh, Father Dominic, uh, who celebrates uh, Saint, we celebrate Saint Dominic today, so happy feast day, Father. And today is also the birthday of our brother Bernard, so happy birthday, brother. And also, uh, we want to remember in our prayers throughout this Mass, our brothers and sisters who are in war-torn countries or in the places of unrest, especially in Ukraine and in the Middle East. So as we, as we go throughout Mass and in our prayers, let's, let's remember them who, especially the innocent, the children, you know, the, the men and women who really have nothing to do with this but are in harm's way. So we remember them, praying that they be safe and protected from, from any violence or injury. Over the last few months, I've been uh, traveling, and I've had the privilege of being in some very special places. Uh, two institutions uh, committed to evangelization and preparing others to go out and evangelize, to teach and preach the truth of Jesus Christ. In June, Father Pascal and I uh, were at the Mexican-American Catholic College in San Antonio, Texas and we were uh, strengthening our, our skills in, in Spanish and, and uh, Hispanic culture. Um, and then uh, after that, I went and I was a chaplain for uh, Living Water College of the Arts in Alberta, Canada. And every year they have some kind of program uh, um, uh, teaching uh, the arts. And this year their, uh, their, their program was on film. And I was, uh, you know, it was, it was a great opportunity uh, to be there and also a privilege. But both places, both places were, were, were filled with a staff and, and faculty who love God, who see their, their job not as a job or as work, but as service to the Lord, as a, as a ministry to God. And, and this was very edifying to behold, men and women who are enthused for preaching and preparing others to preach the Word of God. At the um, uh, Mexican-American Catholic College, uh, they, uh, of course, teach uh, the Spanish language, they teach culture, but they also um, um, uh, write materials, translate materials in Spanish for the, the Spanish-speaking community. And then at, at the Living Water College, they prepare men and women to evangelize through the arts, whether it's uh, theater or, uh, or art or um, you know, film, um, whatever it is, they, they teach them to, to go out and, and to preach through, through the arts. And you know, uh, as, I, as I was saying, that this enthusiasm, this enthusiasm, this love that, that the people had for Christ to, to teach his word is, is, is just really an awesome thing to behold. And today we, we learn about St. Dominic, St. Dominic, who of course had, who had a fire, a fire to preach and teach the truth and love of Jesus Christ. You know, he's, he was a great missionary and he prepared others to go out and to missionize the world, to, to spread the truth, to spread Christ's love. But St. Dominic never lost his fire. Sometimes we 
can lose a little bit of our fire. Sometimes the, the, the enthusiasm is, is diminished a little bit. You know, Jesus is saying today that to be a light to the world. And sometimes we, we can dim that light. And it's very easy to fall into this. Well, for one thing, um, if we have our eyes too much on, on success, you know, in, in a worldly sense, on, on gaining popularity through this evangelization, especially if we're, if we're thinking about riches, you know, this, this is one way where that, that, that starts to extinguish the fire within us, the passion we have for, for preaching Jesus Christ. Our love for God is even diminished as well. And then there is discouragement. When we don't, when we're not seeing results, when we're not seeing, uh, when we, it doesn't appear that fruit is coming forth from, from our service to the Lord, we can get discouraged and, and uh, you know, and eventually just turn in on ourselves. Uh, and this, of course, diminishes the fire, starts putting it out. So this is why we, we look to the example, first and foremost, foremost of Jesus Christ the Lord. But of, but of some of those who went ahead of us, St. Dominic, St. Francis of Assisi, both were two companions. And how did they stay so committed? How did they, how did they prevent themselves from being caught up in successes or, or caught up in discouragement? It was very easy. They meditated often and practiced the poverty of Jesus Christ. When we're meditating and, and practicing the, the poverty of Jesus Christ, we're not so much concerned about successes and, and, and worldly admiration. We're more concerned about living like Jesus Christ and living radically like him. The Holy Father uh, not too long ago said that it's not just the, the, the priests and the religious who are called to live this radical life, but all people, all people are called to live in such a way, such a radical way, Medi and, and meditating on the poverty of Jesus Christ. If we look to Jesus like uh, uh, that, you know, we, we, we maintain this poverty of spirit, knowing that, that what comes from us is, is ultimately a gift from God. The talents we have are from God. And this is why we're able to do these good works. But when we're so focused on success and, and ourselves being seen, then again, this is diminished. Jesus says here, let your good works shine before men like light. But the light of Jesus Christ and him alone, him only. I want him. I want people to see him. I want people to see Jesus. This keeps the enthusiasm burning. This keeps the fire going. And, and then there's uh, discouragement. Well, discouragement is ultimately rooted in, in pride. You know, we're, we're not getting our way. It's not turning out the way we think it should turn out. Well, if we're doing work for God, the work belongs to God. He just wants us to love, to love him and to do all things for love of him. We give it to him. And, you know, St. Dominic at first, you know, he, uh, like I said, this fire was always with him, fire to preach preached the gospel, never lost it. And eventually, as he, as he started, he started with this, uh, with, uh, with this bishop uh, named Diego. They went around preaching. Eventually, um, he started a, a, a community of, of sisters and nuns, and then, and then the friars began to join him. And so they wanted to start a, 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 an order, a community. And at their first attempt was, was not successful. Uh, they says, well, we have too many religious orders. You know, too, too, there's too many rules here uh, of, of religious life. So, uh, so you know, we, we can't accept this right now. And, and, you know, imagine that. Well, like I've done all this work. I've uh, you know, been preaching the gospel. Can't they see that, you know? Um, and, and they've been working so hard, and, and yet they reject it. But Dominic didn't get discouraged because he was a man of prayer a man of practicing and meditating on the poverty of Jesus Christ. So a year later, he petitioned again. This time they, they took the Augustinian rule and, and they were blessed. The, the Pope received them. They became officially known as a religious order and they received so much favor from the church after that, from, from the Holy Father and, and from many bishops. 
And so God really blessed this work, this great work of his that continues on today through, through the Dominican friars and, and a happy feast day to all the, our Dominican brothers and sisters out there. But the example of St. Dominic, you know, the poverty of Christ, always looking at the poverty of Christ. And um, so he, he was not discouraged. He persevered forward. And it was also said that, um, that he met a, a companion, and this was St. Francis of Assisi. And one day he was, he was having a dream, and uh, that, that him and, and, uh, and someone, some man were, were going before the Lord, and, and, um, and he didn't know who this man was. But then the next day he woke up and he was, he was walking around, I think he was in a church somewhere, and, uh, and he saw Francis, and there he was. That, that's who he was. But they, they were two men of like vision, of, 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 of embracing the poverty of Jesus Christ, both um, in, a, in, in, of course, a spiritual way, but yes, also in a very literal way. Um, so, you know, the, the work belongs to God. It's God's work. He will take care of it. He, I mean, we, sometimes we, we think, well, I, I've been volunteering here in the parish. I've uh, been involved uh, in, in these groups and that groups and this uh, evangelization uh, um, uh, group or community. And yet, you know, it's just we're not going anywhere. Well, again, it's God's work. He, he does it. I mean, sometimes in this lifetime, we will never see the fruit of our work or never see the fullness of it. And we don't really have to. It belongs to the Lord. All he asks again is that we love him. That's going to be asked at the end of our lives. How much did you love? Did you do these things for love of me? Or is it for love for ourselves? If we're doing it for love of ourselves, we'll always be disappointed. We'll continually fall into discouragement. For love of Jesus, we continue forward. We're looking at him. We're imitating him. Like, like Francis and Dominic. You know, they, they, were never, they were never recorded to, to be fallen into discouragement or, or, or whatever, you know, that because they were so, so inflamed with the love of God. And so, you know, we, we continue to look to these great examples, um, Dominic and Francis, embracing the poverty of Jesus you know, and, and knowing that in our, in our weakness, God provides. God will provide. God will, will, will bless the work. And you know, um, one more thing is, the, um, you know, there, there's a lot of holy people in the world, a lot of saints that, that we've admired uh, throughout the ages, and even, even many modern day ones. And you know, all these people had to have somebody who inspired them, who encouraged them, who, who preached the gospel to them. You know, and, and, a lot of, and a lot of times, the, the, these people, we do not see. You know, we, we never hear about them. They're, they're not, not highlighted, and they're, they're, they're not really written about much. And, you know, they, but yet, they helped others to become saints. And maybe they didn't realize the, the, um, the fruit of their work, that, that it would be this fruitful, that, that what, what they were doing, what they were saying to somebody would... Would, would take deep root in there, and then they would go forth and, 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 you know, do great things for God, become saints. You see, so, you know, we never know. We never know what, what, what our acts of love, what our, what our evangelization is going to do for the kingdom of God. It could make the next saint. So we put our trust in God. We ask him for his strength, knowing that it is only in him that we can do all things. God bless you all.